Hey everybody, welcome back to Big Red EDC. Checking out another Artisan knife today. This is the Eagle from Artisan. Now, as you can see, we have a carbon fiber version in front of us. There's actually a, a few different ones. They've got a couple of different titanium versions, one with S35BN and one with M390. Uh, pretty sure the colorways are the same. Only real difference in those two is, well, price between S35BN and M390. They also do have a G10 version for that one runs just a little under, just under 50 bucks. It's D2, G10, and then of course we have the carbon fiber version right here. And this one's running right about 60 bucks. But uh, if you want to talk about a wicked blade shape on this thing, but let's check this out first. We do have carbon fiber. Now, the one thing I'm going to talk about this carbon fiber is it kind of throws me back to my in, my introduction uh, to carbon fiber. And, you know, this carbon fiber is kind of slick. Um, definitely wished it had a little bit grippier texture to it. Now, you do have flat scales on this one, and I think that kind of aids in the, the slickery. If you will, you've got a carbon fiber backspacer as well. Deep carry clip. Um, it's trying to be deep carry. You will have a little bit sticking out of your pocket, which you'll see here in a minute. Now, not recessed screws. We've talked about this recently uh, with another artisan knife, the Predator. And you've got okay clearance there. But definitely those recessed screws just really help that out. It is a reversible clip. So there you go. Lefties, you can be happy about that. And lanyard fans, you can be happy too. Because you've got a pretty generous lanyard hole going on. Now, everything is chamfered off pretty well. It's not too squared up, as you can see there. You've got some decent chamfering going on. Uh, on this side, it's a, not quite as chamfered. But, I mean, it's been... The edge have been, has been taken down, so there are no rough edges or anything like that. Um, but always like to see a little bit more chamfering going on like it is on, you know, like right here. As you can see, the chamfering goes, and then it does kind of, and it doesn't. <laughs> you see what I mean? Um, you're kind of chamfered more up here than you are down there on the handle, but... I would like to see a little bit more of that. But overall, a very interesting handle shape, as you can see there. Uh, we'll definitely talk about that. But the, the thing that really stands out to me is the blade on this thing. As you can see, it is a flipper knife. You do have some jimping. Um, doesn't necessarily grab my finger all that much. Uh, doesn't really... Need, I mean, it is kind of a downward angle as well, so... I did find my finger maybe slipping off there once or twice. Zoom out a little bit for you. But detent on it is kind of light. Yeah, did you see that? You want to talk about Wicked Blade. I mean, it opens, it goes, but it's kind of a it's kind of a lazy open. It is. It's a lazy open, but it doesn't fail. It doesn't fail. It opens every time. But guys, check that out. This thing has a wicked, wicked beak going on this thing. Uh, very, very aptly named knife, because that thing does look like either an eagle's talon or an eagle's beak. To me, it looks like an eagle's beak. <coughs> but really, really interesting blade shape. I will tell you one thing. This thing eats through rope. It, it eats through rope. And as you, a lot of you know, that is primarily what I use my knives for at work. I mean, not only that, but you've got, with that wicked recurve there, this thing comes down, hawkbill blade, of course, but that tip, I mean, you can really get that tip into and do some wicked, wicked draw cutting on, but with rope, it just absolutely glides through rope, which impressed the holy heck out of me for sure absolutely 100 percent 
But then you do have a pretty decent trail on it. Now, I did say it had a very interesting handle grip. Well, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. We'll keep going. Four finger trail, not bad. It's not real big, but you can get up there and use it if you want to. And you do have kind of a landing pad there for your thumb. You know, a little bit of a ramp. You know, for me, it kind of, that ramp acts better in a regular grip. Because then my thumb kind of slides up. And as you can see there, it's, it's pretty much off the ramp at that point. But then I can kind of press down on that spine and kind of regain that that grip that I lost by my thumb sliding up. But all right, let's get a size comparison going on here. We got the old PM2. Now, it's the Eagles got it. The Eagles a slightly larger knife than the PM2 is. Slide that down a little bit more for you. And then of course, we have the bug out. Much larger than the bug out if it's larger than the PM2. So, absolutely 100%. We'll get a weight on it for you. Grab the old scale. There it is. Turn it on. Where are we at? Ounces. 5.1. 5.1 ounces or 144 grams. So it's a longer knife for sure, and it definitely has a little bit of weight to go with it. But let's see here, what are we looking at as far as specs? Let me get a good, yeah, there we go. That's a good angle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight and a half inches. I'm getting eight and a half inches overall, a five inch handle, a three and a half inch blade cutting edge. Um, well, you know, as you measure straight on, you're looking at about three and a quarter, but really if you'd straighten that out, you're pushing three and a half or a little more, um, as far as full breadth of your cutting edge. So, like I said, this thing ate, ate through rope. That, that hawkbill blade, slender hawkbill blade, holy cow. Now we're going in the pocket, goes in the pocket pretty easily. But as I pointed out, once you get up there by those screws, you, that's where you kind of get a little bit of a binding going on. And if I push it down, it'll go. It'll, it will go. But they do kind of hang up on those screws a little bit. So I'm, I'm honestly, I'm really still surprised that we're seeing non-recessed screws on pocket clips. I, I would think that is just pretty much standard. Um, it's not terrible on this one. You do have enough clearance, but it's just, I'm surprised we're not seeing that as a standard at this point. You know, the recess, and I'm going to keep saying that because I just, it's so much better. It's so much better. Um, with recess screws, you can drop your pocket clip down, you know, from this right here, that initial angle, which it does kind of drop down, as you can see there. But you're able to get away with, with your pocket clip not standing as high in the grip and potentially affecting someone's grip. Now, this one is not bad at all. As you can see where my hand hits it, it's, it's long enough that my hand is past the high point of the clip. It's, it meets right where it starts to do the dive down, which is good for me. Absolutely. This portion of the clip, it's hitting me just right. So it definitely, definitely isn't really an issue in my grip. We've got, I didn't tell you the grip length. Let's go back to that real quick. Point to point. Wow, imagine that. Right about three and a half because look how it lands. My pinky lands right inside that grip. And that's pretty much right where I want it. But so point to point, it's three and a half. If you have larger hands and you start going back this curve on it, might not be the most comfortable for you. I mean, that's totally conjecture, I'm guessing, um, because my hand, you know, I don't have to grip it back there. But if I if I do move my hand back, see how it's kind of pushing my pinky away? So that could cause a, a little bit of an issue maybe for somebody with larger hands. Like I said, that is totally guess, guesswork on my part. Um, <laughs> the, the overall about this knife... 
is when I first saw it, <laughs> when they first sent it to me, Artisan did send me this knife, by the way. They sent me this one. They sent me the Predator as well. And when I first saw this knife, I was like, hmm, okay. You know, <laughs> not really my style of knife. You know, that's just, you know, I'm, you know, this, that's my style of blade shape, you know, pretty vanilla. Um, but I have to say, it was much more comfortable in hand than I expected. The blade shape performed really outstanding in my line of work. You know, cutting a lot of rope, not a six thread, nine thread, 21 thread natural fiber rope. It really performed way beyond my expectations, 100%. And in that aspect, is it still really, <coughs> pardon me, is it still really my style of knife? No, it's not. But it did everything I wanted it to do. And I mean, pardon me, I guess I cough and anyway, it really, really did. It performed very, very well. And uh, yeah, that it surprised me how good it performed. And that kind of makes me happy, to be perfectly honest with you. Because, you know, normally this isn't my style of knife, as I mentioned. And, you know, maybe it'll come around. The only really detractor I can say about this is the carbon fiber is pretty slick. And, you know, if I was going to pick one of these up, I would probably go with the G10 version. Um, just because of that. I'm guessing the G10 is much grippier, which that's what I want. I would love to see it in a micarta version. Honestly, if they put out a micarta version of this knife, I might pick one up. Because that's how much um, I like the way it performed at work. And, guys, come on, guys. Come on, Artisan. Let's get some... Let's just make those recessed pocket clip screws a standard. I mean, yeah. But anyway, let me know down in the comments, guys. What do you think, you wicked blade shape fans? Let me know. Is this up your alley? Is it not? I'd love to hear what you think about it. Thanks again to Artisan uh, for sending this one out. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. And thank you guys for stopping by and checking it out with me today. As always, guys, like, subscribe, leave me that comment. You know I love talking to you. Until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.